Hello everyone, welcome to the Money GPS. You came here for the truth. Of course, we need to talk about what's happening with Russia and Ukraine, but I'm not just gonna bring you the headlines. I wanna get to some very important information. So stick with me. The first thing is how we've gone from bad to worse. You know what's going on with the central bank, and if not, I will bring that to you. But I wanna show you how that connects in with the second part, and that is the contagion effect. Because you see, this isn't just one central bank or one individual company or person. It has a spillover or domino effect. The third thing is, will stocks rise? That's what I need to show you, at least historically, and we could see what has happened all throughout this period. I've got so much to cover. Let's begin. You can see right here what's going on with the markets themselves. The markets responded in a way that, quite frankly, was very positive over the last little while. The markets believe that everything is a-okay. Now, not all markets, of course. If you see Russian stock ETF falls 30% as crisis in Ukraine continues. This right now is interesting because if you look at the Moscow market had closed down, but of course the ETF based on that has started plunging. So that's what would have happened should that market have stayed open throughout this period. And that's exactly why they would halt it. As markets opened in a panic on Monday, many Russians rushed to the local cash points in Moscow to retrieve their savings before the damage got any worse. Essentially saying, I went there, I took out as much cash as I could because it's going to zero. That's the belief that people have. Whether or not that's the case, we will see. But certainly you know that the exchange rate between the ruble and the US dollar is getting very bad very fast. And what do people do when they believe that this is happening, that their currency is devaluing? I talked about it in my first book, and it's quite frankly that they're not, okay, I'm going to make a really wise decision and I'm going to buy real estate now. No, they're in a panic. So they go out and buy basically anything, anything that isn't their currency. So in this here, they're basically saying that exact thing. From shopping malls to corporate boardrooms, Russians were trying to find their footing on Monday. They're talking about an altered economic reality. And here, I think this was, yes, the Met uh, Metropolis Mall in Moscow. Moscow, the, there were signs that Russians were rushing to turn their cash into consumer goods before prices leapt up. I think it's important because people realize this. They don't you know, think ahead necessarily, but at the last second they could go, they could rush in and they could get what they want, okay, or what they need. So that's important. Then you've got this, the list of foreign companies pulling out of Russia keeps on growing. What was an enticing market 30 years ago is now spurned. So they do list it in here and it's not, it's not uh, exactly, you know, in point form. So I'll just touch on a couple. I mean, if of course, you've got the energy, uh, like BP was one that they mentioned in here, and that's obviously big because it could be up to $25 billion worth of a write-off, and that's you know not exactly something that any company wants to take. BP they mention, they also talk about uh, others in here, Shell is in on the list, Equinor, Exxon, I mean, they just basically named them all and I think it's heavily uh, around the energy sector, clearly, but it could affect other companies as well. I'll show you some of the banks that are involved in that. You've got London firms, and basically it just goes on and on. I'm not going to show you the entire list. If you want all the links in the description under the sources. So right here, you can see Daimler Truck Holding, one of the world's largest commercial vehicle manufacturers, said it will stop its business activities in Russia until further Notice, they're not the only ones. So many different companies have basically said, we're going to stop our services, digital services, products, importing, exporting, I mean, all kinds of different things, okay? So understand that this is having a real widespread effect. You can see what Russia has done over the last while. I mean, it is clear that they are, for one reason or another, essentially getting out of the US dollar. This happens to be the Treasury Securities and they've been getting out of it. I mean, for many years, it's not just since 2014, you know, you could point to that moment, but no, it isn't that moment because that was peaking out in 2011 and it's been declining ever since. Now, of course, they just, you know, kind of got rid of a lot of that, but they've been basically 
I guess they're letting them mature or what have you and not rebuying them. And it's going closer and closer and closer to zero. At the same time, they've been increasing their holdings of gold. So there's a list in here and the next one I'll show you, which basically just gives you a whole bunch like a shotgun blast of information. Emergency measures going on in Russia today, rate up to 20%. Their interest rate doubled overnight. FX inflation negative loop, the foreign exchange and inflation, okay, things are just going crazy. Limited ability to use reserves, no interventions today. So, so because they're locked down, their central bank is locked down, they can't prop themselves up. And that's part of the reason why they increase their interest rate is to force the companies to start going in and intervening for them. Interesting way. Liquidity and credit support to banks, 80% uh, obligatory conversion of export proceeds. Okay. And by the way, when you record at 3.15 in the morning, you make up your own words. Capital controls, measures to prevent Capital flight by non-residents, starting with a ban on dissident, uh, disinvestment from financial assets, 80% export proceeds, unlimited liquidity support to banks as a result of bank withdrawals. Banks are in liquid liquidity deficit. I'm thinking, does it mean that people took out close to 1 trillion rubles over the weekend? Wouldn't that be interesting? Okay, and it just goes on. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read the whole thing to you, but basically on every single level financial, economic, it's devolving rapidly. Now, the sanctions, understand there's different sanctions here. Sanctions on Putin, completely just ceremonial, nothing. Sanctions on the central bank, different story. Okay, and they get into that more in here. The US just unveiled the details of its sanctions against the central bank. Bottom line, this is close to the most ambitious form that this action could take. Here's my initial analysis. So they do get into it again, um, but what he summarized there is good enough for the purposes of this video. They're trying to shut down the ability for the financial system in Russia to do business. They want to do so enough that they can still get the gas from Europe, but at the same time, they don't want them to be able to go on as, you know, you, you need, the way that this works, the U.S. owns these systems, the highways and roads of the financial system. And because of that, they are putting the pressure on the central bank and therefore putting the pressure on the country as a whole. Of course, most people, by the way, hit that like button, most individuals will be hurt by this. This is not going to be positive for the average individual. China and Russia announced a joint pledge to push back against dollar hegemony. This article was back in April of 2021. They've done this many times before, but they are setting up new ways of doing business between each other. These two partners, some would argue reluctant partners, to do business between each other without having the need of the U.S., they're getting sanctioned. They're getting told, you can't trade with these people. You can't trade with those people. If you do, you're going to get sanctioned. If you do that, you're going to get sanctioned. They're tired of it, and they're going another way. So they were already on this path. We see that. Okay, We need to make that known. Take a look at this. Russian bank snapshot. Look at the market share. I don't know how to pronounce that, but Spurbank, okay, 31.5%. This is as of January 2022, VTB Bank, and it goes on through. So you could see how big these companies are, their relation to the banking system, and how they're going to be in big trouble. Uh, this bank here, that top one, the, that was one that people were rushing to, to pull out their cash. I did read that. So then these banks, of course, Citibank is on this list, very, very small in comparison to the total unit credit is on here and so on. So we do have other big banks that are connected. And, you know, this might be a, a little bit of an issue for them. It's not going to bring the entire bank down. But there is a cascading effect that takes place in the financial system as a whole. Now, that's a concern. Aside from the immediate collateral damage, excluding Russian banks from SWIFT risks longer-term consequences for international finance. As with any network, think Facebook, the value of SWIFT depends on the number of banks that use it. 
to that end, cooperative, the cooperative seeks to encourage the broadest possible participation by maintaining neutrality. Only Iran, which was already isolated financially, has ever been cut off. The example of Russia could prompt others, such as China, to turn to alternatives, fragmenting the payment system and potentially even undermining the US dollar's dominance as the global reserve currency. One could even imagine a future in which rival nations turned similar financial weapons against the U.S. Uh-oh, what if suddenly we're starting to use another system developed by China and Russia and other nations? And they say, you know what, U.S., we don't like what you're doing there. We don't like what you're doing there, so we're going to cut you off. I don't know. It is a concern. There's no doubt about it. Let's look quickly at this. Gold outshines treasuries to be the top hedge against Ukraine risk. That's right. Bullion has gained more than bonds, Swiss franc, and the yen. Wow. It's now time to buy gold. That's what they're saying. I don't know if suddenly it's starting to become attractive to, to gold. You know, that barbarous relic, that shiny little object that is starting to look good why because everything else is scary the bond market's looking scary the stock market's going all out of whack it's going up right now actually but it's certainly you know we're still at the levels we had for many many months ago so the market is kind of acting all wonky you know you see the markets going up as a whole but where do we see a lot of that attention well over the last little while it has been value it has been commodities it's been different than what we had previously you could see historically though equity performance during past conflicts since world war ii just look a lot of the time we see positive growth you know as near term as a month you look out three months you look out six months oftentimes things are really good Okay, but understand that during these times, it's not just that one thing that happened. There could be a hundred different things that happened during that period. But the point is, I think unless it is on American soil, I don't think the stocks will necessarily care. We'll see though. There's always going to be that what if. But I'll tell you right now, more money is going into the markets now than we have ever seen before. Flows into global equity funds is at a record high today. Absolute record high. Completely blowing away anything we've seen before. That's, I mean, people should be aware of this right now. And certainly we see that money being chased in to equities at this time. The prices, though, if you think about this, look how much cash is going in and look at the actual price. It is interesting to say the least, isn't it? Why, you know, we've had more money pumped in than ever before. But the stocks for, you know, the indexes and even for a lot of the stocks, we are at, you know, lows we haven't been at for several months. So it is something to watch, something to pay attention to. And of course, I'll give you all that information here on the channel. I hope you appreciated this. Hit that thumbs up. Tell me what you think. Do you see Russia, China, and other countries simply saying, we don't want to deal with this US dollar? And perhaps into the near future, there will be an alternative, or at least perhaps a basket of alternatives. I want to know what you think. Put it down in the comments below if you support the channel. Click that thumbs up button, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.